The reading is from Acts chapter 5. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And then he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Thutis stood up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men, let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice, and when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Thus far the reading. Thank you, choir and musicians, for continuing the long-standing tradition of offering praise to God through music. The reading that we had today as our reading from the scriptures is actually one of the most dangerous passages in the entire Bible. Usually the Bible is considered a safe book, so much so that uh, some governments even want uh, Christian, even want secular schools to, to teach the Bible so that they can pacify the population and make them submissive to their governing authority. I mean, what government wouldn't want its people to learn very carefully the biblical command, everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. And consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. That's the type of safe message that governments would like their people to learn very well. Today's text, on the other hand, justifies rebellion against those in authority. Peter and the other disciples are given a direct order, but they refuse to follow that order even on pain of jail and death. Instead, they say, we must obey God rather than man. In so doing, they show what a life worth living looks like. The great sci-fi author Isaac Asimov taught the same truth in one scene in his book Foundation and Empire. A very authoritative mayor sitting at his big desk is meeting with a captain in the intelligence service who's guilty of not following orders. Instead, instead of my telling the story though, let's listen in on the key scene.
Oh, Captain, my Captain. Your record is unusual. Your ability is outstanding, and it would seem your service is valuable beyond question. I note that you have been wounded in the line of duty twice, and that you have been awarded the Order of Merit for bravery beyond the call of duty. Those are facts not lightly minimized. However, you have not been promoted in 10 years, and your superiors report over and over again of the unbending stubbornness of your character. You are reported to be chronically insubordinate, incapable of maintaining a correct attitude towards the superior officers, apparently uninterested in maintaining frictionless relationships with your colleagues, and you're an incurable troublemaker. How do you explain that, Captain? Excellence, I do what seems right to me. My deeds on behalf of the state and my any wound in that cause bear witness that what seems right to me is also in the interest of the state. A very soldierly statement, Captain, but a very dangerous doctrine. Are you blind that you do not see that by arrogating to yourself the right to determine intelligence policy, you usurp the duties of your superior? Excellence, my duty is primarily to the state and not to my superior. As servant of the state, I must serve faithfully, and he serves most faithfully who serves truly. You have your orders. You will obey those orders. Further argument of any sort with myself or those representing myself will be considered treason. Do you understand? You are excused. Well, the scene ends with the captain respectfully returning to his barracks where he receives an urgent order in the strongest possible terms to check out a minor rebellion as his next assignment. Instead, he jumps in his private spaceship and sets his course calmly and firmly for another planet where a more dangerous rebellion is stirring. The last words of the chapter are, he slept that night the sleep of a successfully stubborn man. Imagine having a purpose, a mission for your life that's more important than your comfort, even more important than your own life. Imagine living out that purpose, that mission, no matter what opposition you face. That's a life worth living for those who have been created in the image of God, for those who have been set free of the bondage of sin and even free from the fear of death. <clears throat> those who look upon Jesus Christ as their ultimate purpose, their ultimate goal. That's the life the apostles lived. That's a life we have a chance to live as well. In Jesus' name, amen.